excited about it because God's word is full of revelation. And once in a year, I try to capture your attention about eternity. Every year, I try to because our life is not balanced if all we think about is this side of eternity. There is more. So today we're going to be talk talking about afterlife series. Rapture and resurrection. Amen. There are a lot of questions people ask. Sometimes they don't even know the answers. So they make up theories. The Buddhist says, in case you don't know, if you don't live right now, when you die, you may return as a dog. <laughs> you can come as a cow. That's why they call it reincarnation. In India, they worship literally cows. Lack of understanding. Be a nice person because you may end up coming back as an evil person. That's not true. But they don't know. There are questions people ask. What happens when we die? Where are the dead? What are they doing? Are we going to be eating in heaven? <laughs> we'll be drinking there. What about unbelievers? When they leave, what happens? What is hell? What is going on right there? So that is the study of afterlife. A lot of people don't have time to think about it. Except maybe they are on terminal sickness. And then they send a chaplain to them to go talk to them about afterlife. And they are hearing it for the first time. People of God, God has not left us in dark. The scripture is full of revelations about what lies here after. It is called eschatology in the study of scriptures. The study is called the study of the last things. Christian eschatology. They look at life after heaven and hell, second coming, the resurrection, the rapture, tribulation, millennium, the end of the world, the last judgment, new heaven, new heart. Are you interested to learn these things? They are all in the scriptures. So in the next three weeks, you will run with me. We're going to be looking at three. I just picked three of the topics. Number one, life after death. Number two, we're going to study rapture and resurrection. What does it mean? And number three, we will look at rewards and recompense. So today we start the journey, life after death. We're going to find answers to these important questions from the book of Revelation. Is there life after death? What happens when people live here? None of us, we're familiar with these things, our family members colleagues, loved ones, relations, they have gone. We use the word carelessly because we did not understand the graphic of what we say. When somebody has a family died, they say, well, I lost my uncle. If your uncle is a child of God, you did not lose him. You lost somebody when you don't know their whereabouts. By the grace of God, please mark your calendar the third Sunday, December 18. We're going to have a short, very brief remembrance and memorial for those who have lost families in the course of this year. We're going to be praying for you. So please, if you have no family, friends, bring them to church and we believe God for comfort. That is December 18, not that. So there are questions I'm going to be asking uh, and, and answering for you today. Look at the, that picture in front of you there. It talks about, you see a, a, a path right there. There is a bridge that we cross. Life after death. On this side, you see desert. In this side of eternity, we die and we're dying. 
There is another side. The bridge that takes us across is called death. The subject of death is very scary. Many people don't want to talk about it. It is emotional. It is sad. But it's an everyday occurrence. You see people die around us. It happens every now and then. So Christians, we should be vast with the knowledge of afterlife. How many of you have read the book of Revelation before? Revelation. You never know. You know some people say, I don't want to touch it. I don't understand what he's talking about. Yeah. See, that is why we're studying it. So that your understanding. Every scripture is written for our edification. God put secret out there so that we will not be ignorant. The devil thrives on ignorance. Scripture talks about people who are perpetually in bondage for fear of death. They are not aware there's life after death. What kind of life? So I'm going to answer question one. Please, if you have a note for yourself or you capture it on the screen. Question number one, why afterlife matters? Why are we talking about it? Why don't we leave it alone? Why should it be part of sermons and messages and teachings and the scriptures? Why does it matter? Your life is divided into three segments. Let me start by saying that. Three segments. There is before life, before you came here. There is life that you are living right now. Yes. And then there is life after you live here. Three layers, three levels. The life before, before we came, the scripture explained to us in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse number 5. I've always known you, even before I through your mother. Jeremiah 1 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. You were not an accident. I know you. In fact, before you, you were put together in the womb of your mom, I called you by name. That is the life before. And that's why it is bad and terrible to kill babies. Do you understand that? Because they are living beings identified with God. We may call them fetus, but God called them persons. So here it says, before you came in here, I already called you. But the truth is, by the time we were born, we have no recollection. We don't know what happened. That is a, a, a sea of forgetfulness. Then the life here, you were born here. That's the second part. And your time here determines your time after that. Let's look at our world now as a preparatory stage for the life after. It is like a drop of water in an ocean, our life on earth. It is incomparable with the life in front of us. Our afterlife destination is decided by a fraction of time. A fraction of time. Imagine 80 years of our lives deciding a million years after that. Can you see they're not proportional, isn't it? What you're doing today, the decisions you're making, the place of God in your life is a pointer to your afterlife. Every decision you are making, you better pay attention because it's a preparatory stage for the years to come. Eternity. Amen. Are you with me, church? So we cannot live carelessly. In fact, Deuteronomy 32, 29. Let me read this to you. Deuteronomy 32, 29. Moses was speaking to the people. God was speaking to them. He says, oh, that they were wise. Look at that. 
What we're discussing today is called wisdom. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they will consider their latter end. It is wisdom. Psalm 90 verse 12. It says, teach us to number our days. And what do we do? Apply our heart to what? Wisdom. Our continuity here on earth is limited. The life after is longer. That's why it is important. So is there life after death? Yes. The people who have gone, who have gone to glory, they are as alive, in fact, if not more alive than those of us here. They are breathing and living. That is life. Jesus introduced himself to us in Revelation chapter 1 verse number 18. When John saw him, he said, you, you are looking at me. I am he that liveth. Verse 18, Revelation 1, 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have with me the keys of hell and death. Hallelujah. Jesus finished the battle. He says, I am the resurrection and life. In Revelation 14, verse 13, Revelation 14, 13, he says, I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, see the spirit that they may rest from their labors. Their works follow them. Life after death. Real. Amen. So let nobody tell us, well, they're gone, they're lost. No, they're not lost. If you know of a family member who loved the Lord, who died as a believer, I'll know where they are. They are not lost. They are living. Life is there. So today we answer the first question. Life, is there life after death? The answer is yes. Now let's look at the second part of it. What is dead? That's question number two. What is dead? Or rather, who is dead? I don't even use the word what. It is who. Dead is a living being. A spirit. Have you heard people say, well, the spirit of dead. I rebuke you. Have you heard that before? A living thing. We heard the word die, death, right from the mouth of God. Where, what was the origin of death? How did death come to our life? We are a human, a living being that started dying the day we were born. Death came into the garden in Genesis 2.17. God said, Adam and Eve, the day you eat of the fruit of this tree, you will surely die. So death came into our lives because of disobedience. Death, disease, sickness, they are attached to sin. Death was a sentence pronounced on human being. So we started dying. And it continues perpetually. Excuse me, sir, you are not exempted. Except Christ come in your days. One man was writing his biography. He said, where well, I've been reading about everybody that I thought God was going to make an exemption in my own time. <laughs> God will make an exemption. Mm -mm. Steve Jobs, I was sharing this morning, when death, look at him with all his money, all the inventions, the apple, apple is still talking to us, right? <laughs> with all the billions that were saved in the bank. When dead, he smelled it, he, he sensed it, he saw it. He said, oh my, wow, wow, wow. Are you hearing me, church? Is anybody scared? Don't be scared. <laughs> your daddy couldn't do anything about death, neither your great-grandfather. So it is going continually. But do you know from scriptures, we understand that death 
for a believer is actually a passage to a better life. Amen. Have you heard the word Grim Reaper? Anybody heard the word Grim Reaper? That is a Grim Reaper. That's the picture of it. How did woman be conceived that? It's usually a skeletal figure shrouded in a dark hooded robe carrying a scythe to reap human souls. It appeared during the Middle Age in Europe when Black Death, just like COVID, we have epidemic, attacked the whole world. One third of European population perished. He called it Grim Reaper. When you see that, the Grim Reaper is coming. He's harvesting soul. It is another word for death. What is the mystery of death? Why do we need to die? It is because death is needed to close the chapter of sinfulness and wickedness of mankind. When Adam and Eve had sinned, the scripture said God placed the cherub, uh, cherubs at the gate. One, I mean two of them to prevent Adam and Eve from going back into the garden so that they do not put their hands on the fruit or the tree of life. If they have eaten of that tree, if they have eaten of it, friend, will have been perpetually alive in sin. Think about that. Uncle King will still be living in the neighborhood. Think about Nimrod, Adolf Hitler, Shoot them, they won't die. Cut off their head, they are not dying. Think about how the evil will continue to perpetuate. So death is an end to wickedness. God allowed it to open the door for a new chapter, free from diseases, de destruction, and all of that. So death is a blessing, not a problem in the real sense of it. Life after death. God does not want us to be afraid of death. Fear of death leads to bondage. Fear of death traps. God wants us to be free and know what is written in the world. So we're looking at life after death. So first question is, why are we talking about it? Number two question is, why is death necessary? Why is death certain? Hebrews 9.27, let's look at that. Hebrews 9.27, it says, And it is appointed unto men once. How many times? Could you give that on the screen for me? It is appointed once to die. After what happened then? Judgment. I've heard people tell stories that when their grandmother died, they saw grandma in the north. Grandma was selling granite. <laughs> Anybody had that kind of story before? Come on, talk to me. Have you had stories like that before? Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't reconcile. How is that possible? In fact, they tell the story that once when he saw me, he quickly disappeared because he knows I recognized him. She was dead. <laughs> it is appointed. How many? How many people will die? How many times to die? The scripture cannot be broken. If you see anybody that look like your grandma uh, up at New York, it is not grandma. It is the devil using the body of grandma. Are you hearing me? <laughs> you cannot break the word of God. Wants to die. Now we notice from this scripture that death is an appointment. It is certain. Someone says, a certain as tax in the United States, IRS will collect. <laughs> so death is also certain. And we often forget, we spread our safety. If you were born, you will also die. No one is here to stay forever. No one is exempted from, from it. Only two people since the creation of Adam has escaped death. You know them? Elijah and Enoch. But we also believe, in the, according to the book of Revelation, they're going to return. They're also going to taste death. The Bible talks about two coming in the days of the end time. Their body will be killed. They will die in the street. Everybody tastes death. 
because they are living still in their body. But God is giving us a new body after death. It's called glorified body. Immortality will be put on and it will replace mortality. Are you learning something? So death is an appointment. It has been fixed. When, where, how remains unknown. But the event has been scheduled. So whatever we're doing on earth, let's also be mindful that this place is not a permanent abode. We are here not to spread our self and forget eternity. We are also here to prepare for afterlife. What comes next? When you look at, give me this statistic, say what birth and death rate. This was taken in 2011, so the, the statistics will be different now. It says birth rate. You look on one side of the column. 19 birth for every 1,000 people in population. Then 8 death. Can you see that? Thank God that birth is more than death. 8 people die per 1,000 population. Per year, 132 million people were born. And 55 of them died. Every hour, 6,316 people die. By the time we finish this sermon, 12,000 people will have gone to eternity. Are you with me, church? I want to provoke your thought this morning. Not to make you mad, but to make you glad <laughs> that you are a child of God. Amen. And if you are not a child of God, to prepare you and wonder what you are still waiting for. What is holding you? So life expectancy is a continuous thing. People are coming and people are going. But many of us, we are too busy to think about it. Accidents, sickness, gone, murder, witches, claiming people's life. All over and every day. So what does death mean? He had a few things here, four things. Say what you believe about death and eternity will determine how you live. What is the meaning of death? Number one, it's a balance of life. Give me that next slide. Balance of life. Complete life circle. Right, you see human life circle here. Look at that picture. When the baby is born, they carry him in a stroller, carry him in a whatever. And then the baby begins to crawl. He's using four limbs like an animal. Is that right? Crawling to and legs. And then he begins to walk. He's stirred up in right and it's growing. He becomes two limbs. Then as he's aging, he becomes three. <laughs> what is the third one? A walking stick. Thereafter, he lost all. He goes to sleep. Give me the next picture. We're talking about our cycle of life. Go to the next picture. Look at that. Birth, growth, maturity. Everything is going up and up and up. And then it gets to a point, it terminates. It becomes what we call maintenance. <laughs> Thank God for young people, teenagers. You look good. Say, Pastor. I am beautiful. Look at my teeth. <laughs> Praise God for you. In the next 30 years or 45, what happened? Maintenance. Decline. Death. Is somebody angry this morning? <laughs> that, no, I don't like this. <laughs> but that is our fact. Amen. I want to provoke you because these are realities of life. We go from infancy to childhood to adolescent to adulthood to old age. If you're making fun of old people today, hey, it's a matter of time. You are going to be old too. Open door for the old people because when it comes your turn, they will open door for you. That is life. It's a balance. It's a circle. We come in, we exit. He said, to everything, there is a season. A time to be born and a time to die. It is all called life balance. 
Number two, what is the definition of death? It means cessation of earthly life here on earth. We cease to live here, but then we are alive somewhere else. It means number three, to be absent in the body and to be present somewhere else. In fact, Bible gives us this interpretation in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. Paul was explaining 2 Corinthians 5, 1. He said, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, this thing we call body is a house, is an enclosure, is a container. So don't spend your eternity decorating it. All the paint will fade away. The plastic surgery is plastic. Dust will return to what? Dust. Amen. Balance your life. Prepare for eternity. He says, if this earthly house were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heaven. What is he talking about? We have another body. Now we we'll explain that later on, but we're still talking about what death means. It means to rest, to sleep, to go home. An appointment that is must be completed. So question three, what happens then when we die? What follows death? I want to explain this so that you can understand this process. When people die, we have so happy we had a near-death experience. They give, they actually give testimonies. They write, they, they write books. I read quite a bit of them. Say, look, they just find that something evolved from their body. The soul and the spirit separate from the body. The body lies there. Then the individual say, they look back. And they saw their body on the, on, the, on the table, right? On the bed. And then they felt they were floating. They were floating through the room. They could see what the doctors were doing. They heard what everybody was saying. But they could not participate anymore. They have left the realm of the physical. There's a realm. In this realm where we live, you can only operate here with your body. But when a person dies, the soul and the spirit separate like a detachment, detach from the body and go to another realm. They can go through the wall. They can go through the ceiling because nothing hinders them anymore. They are no longer in the physical realm. Are you, are you learning something? Now give me the next picture. I want to show you the picture. You are made up of three components. You have the body, you have the soul, and you have the spirit. You are three tripartite in person. Three tripartite. Body, spirit, soul. Go to the previous slide. The previous slide. Now, you see the outer layer is your body. That's where you, you feel. That's where you sense, you hear, you eat. And all of that is all in the outer enclosure. Then the second layer is your soul, which is called your psyche. That is where your, your sense of conscience, imagination, memory, you hate them, you don't like them, you hurt them. It's all in the realm of your soul. When we give our life to Christ, our body is not the one that is born again. That's why the scripture says, subdue your body. Don't let your body drag you to hell. Your body is not born again. Your body still wants to indulge. Your body still wants to do stuff that is not right. Your eyes would like to control your life. So control it. Then what about your soul? Your soul, the second layer, is also not born again. It says renew the mind. Renew your mind by the scripture. You have something to do about your body and something to do about your soul. Then what gets born again? It is your spirit. The innermost person. You could see that there. The innermost person. That is the real you. That is the one that have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. A person may be religious and not born again because there's no encounter in the spirit with God. 
that innermost. So what happens at the time of death? The soul and the spirit, they detach from the body. Fly around in the room. And then, of course, the body becomes lifeless. Give it few hours, it begins to shrink. The heart shrink. The, the blood vessels collapse. The heart stop bleeding, uh, stop beating. I was talking, thinking about this one. Say, what a masterpiece that God put inside of us called our heart. The very day in the hospital, they told your mom they detected a heartbeat. God kickstart your heart. From that day, boom, boom. It continued to beat. How old are you now? You are 60 years old. Your heart has been beating for 60 years. Non-stop. Have you thought about that? Five seconds, you, you are dead. There is no machine that can work like that. This is our God is a great God. He says, I am wonderfully, I'm, I'm, I'm beautifully prepared, put together. Wondrous are your work, oh God. The fool said in his heart, there is no God. Think about that. The way God put us together is it, it, a mystery. Ten seconds, your heart stopped beating, you are gone. You seen dead body, if they do not embalm them, in the next three, three, two, three days, they start stinking. Is that correct? Oh my God. As great as we are in this flesh, it is nothing. Say, dust out upon dust. Dust it shall return. This beautiful face. Thank God. Uh, this chubby, chubby cheek. <laughs> this fat neck. Uh, dust or what? <laughs> you say, Pastor, you didn't know that. <laughs> what is that? Dust. They did plastic surgery, they modify things. What is that? Dust. Hmm. Tell your friend, they will be mad. But tell everybody the truth. Let's spend, balance our time with eternity. So, what happened? The soul and the spirit, they come together and they start a journey to eternity. An abode has to be found for them. And don't forget I said, what happens before you die they, they will determine what happens to you after you are dead. Jesus told us the story of Lazarus and the rich man. You remember that story? He said, this rich, there are two people, but they made different choices. Lazarus died. He was assisted by an angel. They carried him. And there, straight to the bosom of Abraham, and right there, he recognized, he remembered who he was. Then the scripture said, the rich man too, look at that. The different, death is the same for everybody. But what happens at that moment of death is where the separation begins. At the time of death, angel came to carry Lazarus. At the time of death, there were no angel to carry the rich man. The Bible says he opened his eyes and he saw he was in hell. And when he was there, he recognized. So that means people that died, they did not lose their memory. He knew who Lazarus was. He actually knew his name. His knowledge was perfect. He remembers he has brothers who have not given their life to Christ. He felt pain. So the soul and the spirit continues to two options. You can go to hell or you can go to heaven. We'll do that in another study. But in that eternity, the soul feels the pain and pleasure. It's a different kind. Very different kind. Hell is real, people of God. The Bible says there, they are crying day and night. They are feeling, but they don't have a body, but their soul and their spirit have a way of detecting pain or pleasure. This is real. So, what happened? The body and the soul get separated. 
But they will be reunited at the time of resurrection. We'll talk about resurrection later on. They will still come back together. The body will come from wherever it is, whether it died in the sea, whether it died in a road accident, whether it was born, it was crushed, it was, it was uh, all of the things, if ashes. I don't know. This God is a mystery. Even people who have their ashes thrown and scattered, the Bible says at the day of resurrection, their body will come back. Wow. They will have another body. And their soul and their spirit will meet again. And that will be for judgment. Hallelujah. Tony Evans says something. Say, have a good time at my funeral because I'm not going to be there. That's a good one, right? Say, I better have a good time. Because what happens after you die depends on what happens before you die. After life. Show me the next picture. I want to use this picture to illustrate as we're closing. Plan of salvation. I want to show you how God planned eternity. From A to Z. It's not complex. It's not complicated. It's actually, if we read the scripture, it, the eternal plan of God is so clear. If anyone says, I don't understand, I don't know what the mysteries are, it's because you don't want to. The scripture making, it said to Revelation, uh, John, the, uh, the, the, John the man who wrote it, he said, make this plain. Remove the veil from it so that anyone who read it will understand. In the time of Daniel, he said, put a veil on it so that they will read it, but they won't understand. Oh, our generation is blessed. We can see the eternal plan of God from A to Z. Can you follow with me on the, on the screen? See, the pre-mortal existence. Remember, that's where we started. That is the life before. We didn't know what happened there, but we know we were living then. Don't forget, the soul is immortal. It is the body that is mortal. Are you getting it? Soul is never destroyed. No. It is never. It's indestructible. It's eternal. So in the pre-mortal, before we were born, we entered to the realm of veil of forgetfulness. We have no clue what happened. Nobody knew what happened. God didn't let us know that. Then we were born as a baby into the planet Earth. The mother heart. We live our life here. But our life here is going to decide what happens to us after that. That is the exam we have to pass here. Because if you don't pass this, your placement next is decided by your passing the exams here. So, the man dies. The spirit goes to either paradise or the spirit prison, which I call hell. And the body goes to where? Grief. At the time of death. Then, give it time. It could be a thousand years for some. It could be uh, three thousand for others. It could be longer. It also could be a matter of weeks for others. But when Jesus Christ comes, which we'll discuss later, that when the rapture happens, the timeline changed. So during that timeline, the dead in Christ, I won't go into detail for that now, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Their body and their soul will meet together. And then, the, those who have not known the Lord will go to deep, start on that. And then there is a final judgment. When God will judge everyone according to what is written. At that time, there's no repentance anymore. There's no salvation. Then, there are three options. Celestial, God says, I will make a new heaven and a new heart. So the earth and the heaven as we know it will be recreated. Same, but recreated or refurbished, if you can use that word. A new heaven, a new heart. So a new heart is where we will live forever and ever and ever. That is where we call it immortality. We'll be there for millions and millions and millions of years. Amen. Then there's a third option. What are we doing about those who did not know Christ? Who refused him? Unfortunately, they will go to the last piece, which is called the lake of fire. 
you will not get there in Jesus' name. That is where there is every, that's when the devil himself and all the angels that messed up, they will be there for the rest of their day. There will be nobody called devil after that. Devil will be done. Are you seeing the, the beautiful plan of God? Will you be in that eternity? Will you be there? So, we're looking at question number three. What happens after death? So, we understand that. Question four. Can the dead help us? If daddy, mommy died, can we pray to them? Should we pray to them? Can they see us? <laughs> they should not, isn't it? They are free from those things. Do you even know they could recognize, in fact, from what I've studied, that the dead will recognize each other, but not in the relationship that they had on earth. There's no wifey, no husband. Hey, that's my husband. No, sir, no man. Forget it. Wife is, wife is here. Darling, darling, darling is here. You will know that is your husband. It used to be your husband. The Bible says in heaven, the angels will be like angels of God. And angels are sexless. You know that? They are neither male or female. So whatever we do on earth is for heart. I was sharing this money. Why must you be so mad and kill yourself because you, they, there's no man? No, you couldn't get somebody to marry. We will go somewhere where marriage is no longer necessary. Amen. I'm not saying you should not marry. Marry by God's grace. <laughs> but marriage is not the end of it all. You understand that? Oh, my children. Oh, my children. Oh, thank God for that. But we get to heaven where there are no student attachment. We are all on our own. Are you saved? Or are you lost? Children, you better make up your decisions now because your parents won't be able to make a difference when you get there. Amen. We should not consult those who are dead. It's called necromancy. There are people who do that. Saul did that. Remember in the Bible, he wanted to hear from God. He was desperate to hear the voice of God. He went to a witch and said, I need you to bring me somewhere. You remember that story? It's called necromancy, consultation of the dead. It is not the dead because people die once after that judgment. What they are consulting are demons. Does that make sense? Demons can take, uh, that's why we call it familiar spirit. They can take the personality of individual. They can talk like you do. They can act like you are. That's why it's called familiar spirit. They are familiar with your ways of life. In those meetings, they, they will sit, put their hand around the table, and they, they are here, they are here. Who? Demons. <laughs> Don't participate. Are you, are you getting a people of God? Don't participate. Daddy, mommy, don't forget us when we are here. Some parents, even some, some families, they will go yearly, they will pour something on the grave of their, of their parents. They say we have to do a turnover, we have to turn their side so that they can continue to bless us. Woo! <laughs> Devils. Are you learning something, people of God? They are gone. They are not supposed to be bothered. I used to say, if the, your parent who died long ago is seen your frustration and say, oh, oh, my child, my child, they will have eyebrow pressure in heaven. <laughs> and God cannot allow that. Is that right? No, there can be no headache there. There can be no migraine. <laughs> say, ah, that is my son. Father, do something. That is my son. Eh? Not in heaven. <laughs> Are you learning something from the words of God this morning? God free us. He wiped away our tears. No more sorrow. No more pain. Whatever you do on our friend, don't miss that place. Don't miss it. Nothing in this world is worth the offer. Whatever anybody offer you, whatever they exchange, is not worth it. Eternity. My God. 80 years compare that to a million year. Leave that girlfriend alone. Leave that boy alone. Otherwise, it will take away your eternity. When you are going to heaven, you better be serious. So, question four says, don't worry about those who have died because they are not concerned about us. So, what must we do in order to prepare for death? Let me close by giving you four things. What must we do? 
four things. Number one, we need to live every day as if it is our last. Does that make sense? As if someone told me, I was listening to a message this past week. He said, when you are 70, he said, God promised by his grace that he will give us up to at least 70 years. He said, when you are 70, you should be praising God and dancing and rejoicing. That's why we celebrate 70. He said, celebrate because you have received your body pass. <laughs> say, your flight has been scheduled. You are flying. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Is there anything else you do after 70 is grace and extra? You should be thankful. If you are 80, you should be thankful. God just gave you 10 more years of joy to see your great, great and grandchildren. Say, but don't forget you have the boarding pass. Your name is already in the data. <laughs> that was funny. And the truth is, live every day as if you are ready. Every one of us, people of God, young and old, there's no guarantee that people live to a certain age before they are called up. Live your life as if it could be, we could be called to board any day. Number two, release yourself from every grudge, malice, struggle, strife. No, I'm not going to let this happen. Not in my life. Not oh, me, oh, ah, ah. Uh, when the call comes, does it matter who owe you? Does it matter how much they owe you? Say, you know what? Father, I need to go back to the world. I need to go collect. What are you going to do with it when you collect it? <laughs> Everything is gone. All the mansions we build ourselves, all the names we make for ourselves, all our certificates, all our accolades. That's why I look at the people of the world I shake my head at how people can be wicked and mean and not thinking about their afterlife. Can you imagine that? Those who rule in government, those who are leaders of people, you are not, you, I say, it's better that you don't even go there because God is going to judge you for everything you do. I was listening yesterday about a, a first lady of a country. Somebody said something on some of you have read the story. Put something on in Twitter. Abuse the first lady. The first lady asked that boy to be arrested. 22 year old and they were giving him lashes for putting rubbish on the Twitter. And while the first lady was trying to broke her own ankle too. See that is karma. <laughs> broke her ankle. Rushed her to the hospital. And I was thinking what about afterlife? Everything we do here, people of God, is going on record. Be good to people. Be kind to people. Live quarrel alone. Get rid of all of this extra thing. In fact, the last word I said, travel light. Where you're going is important than where you are coming from. People who have been fighting, you holding grudges, they don't, want, they don't want to have peace with you. You have peace by force. You, can't, you cannot block where I'm going. You can't. I won't let you do that to me. Family members, release them. Let them go. Travel light. And then there it says, serve the Lord with your best. Do your best for God while you are alive. Fulfill your purpose. Invest your time in eternity. Don't forget what happens after life is decided by what happened here. Our giving, our commitment, our sacrifice. God is recording them. You are busy. You have no time. It's in the record. Yes. You are you're going to meet them. The way you lay your bed is the way you're going to sleep on it. Let's be very mindful. Lord, give us wisdom to number our days. Where are you going? What, who are you that you are wearing the cloth of iron? What do you want to become? My God. 
the moment our breath is out of our nostrils, that's the end. A man called Voltaire, I will close with that. Voltaire. Voltaire was a French philosopher. He was an atheist to the core. He made fun of Christianity. He said, this Christianity is a waste of time. This Christianity, I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to put out Christianity in 20 years. That guy said that. I will go to va <laughs> destroy Christianity in 20 years by my writing. Uh, when he was taken to the hospital, he cried. He said, oh God, if there is one, save my soul if I have one. He said, Lord, you, you abandon me. <laughs> Within 20 years after I was dead, his house became a printing uh, publishing company to print Bible. The man who said he was going to wipe away Christianity, God, God play around me. <laughs> look, at, look at that. His house was being used to, print, to, print, to, to publish Bibles. Where's Voltaire today? Where's Adolf Hitler? Where are all the mighty, the strong, the powerful? Dead hands them. Friends, let's rise together. Let's pray. May we be ready. May we, may we be qualified that when we enter into the presence of God, the world will say, well done, faithful servant. You are among the wise. Look at the last, give me the last slide. Last slide says, after life, eternity, are you ready? Are you ready? Come on, lift your hands and say, Father, thank you for this word. Thank you. Come on, come on, bless him. Bless him. Lord, thank you for letting me hear words like this. There are people who are dead. They could not hear this anymore. It is too late for them. They have gone to a, a, a Christless eternity. Thank you, Jesus, that I can hear this. My children can hear this. They can be prepared for eternity to come. Lord, I ask of you, can you begin to pray? Father, I pray that you will give me wisdom. Make me to be wise. That I will take care of my life. I will pay attention to my life. Lord, I will pay attention to what I am doing. Lord, I will invest my life correctly. I will choose my priorities correctly. I will live every day to please you. Lord, deliver me. Deliver me from carelessness. Deliver from my feet from sleeping. Lord, help me. Uphold my hands. Lord, that eternity to come, my name will not be removed from that book of life. Oh, Lord, help me to invest my time, invest my money, invest my resources in a way that will please you, that will honor you. Teach me to number my days. To apply my heart to wisdom. Lord, thank you. If you are here this morning, you are not child of God. You are not born again. You are not sure. You can't gamble with this kind of thing. Say, so where we'll find out when we get there. No, finding out will be too late. You, if you don't know now, you will never know there. Your, is your name in the book of life? Are you born again? Are you in the race? Or are you just deceiving people? I want you to place your right hand on your chest, everyone if you can. And, and just, just reaffirm your commitment. And say, Jesus, my life belongs to you. My heart belongs to you. You will uphold me with your right hand of righteousness. Lord, I ask of you, temptation will not take me out. Trial will not take me out. You will preserve me. You will uphold me. Oh, in this heavenly race, I will not be disqualified. Help me, Lord. Those who are not born again, just say, Jesus, come to my heart right now. Write my name in the book of life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father. Now everybody lift your hand before God. I want to pray this last prayer for you. Oh, you are born for a mission. You were created for a purpose. Your father said, before you came here, I have a purpose for you. As your hands are raised up, you will not die before your time. 
Oh, if you're here, make a meal. I know you will not die before your time. Hey, everyone under the voice, the sound of my voice, you will not lose your life. You will fulfill your mandate. You will fulfill your purpose. The, plan, the plans of God for you and your children shall not fail. In the mighty name of Jesus, the enemy will not take you out. In the name of Jesus, you will not live your life in regret. You will be a blessing to mankind. You will be a blessing to humanity. God will use you on this side of eternity. He will use you to do good work. You will do great things. Your investment in heaven shall be great. Lord, thank you. We refuse to be careless. We will not live a carefree life. Thank you for your grace. We include our children in this prayer. Those who are not saved among them, Lord, save them. Those who have not understood this message of salvation, Holy Spirit, save their souls. Our parents, our fathers, our brothers, our siblings, oh, those who are connected with us, Jesus, we ask of you, show them your mercy. Save their souls. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray.